Uh, this video is in direct response to a post on Chief Talk, and I'm not going to list the original poster's name because this is kind of beneficial to all, but I will be addressing what they are speaking to in their post. And so one of the selections, excuse me, one of the um, suggestions that are in this post is creating some kind of an object browser. And not that I'm opposed to that, but a lot of the reasons for that suggestion seem to implicate that maybe the original poster doesn't know about some of the things that we can do in Chief Architect currently, and I'm here to help them out and their workflow if I can. And it's not to say that they aren't a very skilled technician. I would um, more accurately state that Chief Architect is a massive software and it's difficult to know all things. And especially when you're coming and learning from a separate software where uh, the implementation of uh, specific tools are completely different than in Chief, Chief Architect, it's not necessarily intuitive to learn these new tools in the way that Chief Architect intends. Keep in mind, this software has been around for um, multiple decades now, so uh, it hasn't strayed too far from its original purpose and intent and function. So let's go over a few things that that original poster might not know and might help you out, the viewer. And I have some of these, view, um, these videos in my Chief Architect Shorts playlist. And I'd encourage you to go watch those. Those are straight to the point, you know, under five minute videos. Um, but let's put them kind of all together. And this is almost like what I do in my first training sessions when people hire me for training. So let's go over, first off, I wanna go over the marquee select mode versus contained selection mode, because it seems that the OP is having a difficult time selecting objects in a busy grouping, like this grouping right here, where I've got a faucet, a sofa, a door, and multiple outlets, as well as let's just throw this kind of cabinet in the mix. And we can see how can we select these different items without kind of selecting all items. So I'm gonna get into preferences and I'll just tell you on a Windows machine, it's really easy to get to preferences by Alt, E, F, F, Enter. And then if we even go Shift, Tab, we're gonna get into our panel menu on the left-hand side. And that way I can type in some things. So I'm gonna type in EDI for edit. And we're gonna see here that we've got select intersected objects or select contained objects. Now, by default, out of the box, Chief is set to select intersected objects. What does that mean? Let's go ahead and get out of this menu. Now, when I draw a marquee, and I'm just using the Select Objects tool, you're going to notice here, it selects everything that that marquee passes through, including the wall itself. Now, let's get back into Preferences. And I'm going to switch to Select Contained Objects. Now, when I draw a marquee, What's it gonna do? It's only gonna select things that are completely contained within my selection. Now the next part of this original poster's query was that it's hard to tell when he's, he's selected something in a busy group uh, from one object to the next. And that's kind of the reason that they want an object browser is to have an easier way to edit just the thing that he wants to edit. Well, we can still do that by doing a combination of different things, but let's start with that contained objects mode. And then let's also mention how we might be able to change the out of the box colors. Let's get back into preferences. I'm gonna type in COL and we're gonna see here selected line. My selected line is pink. And I would encourage you to change this to some bright color as well as selection fill. I will note that my selection fill has an opacity of 10%. This was new to, I believe X14, I think. So that's a big one for me. And then secondary handle fill, primary handle fill, selected edge handle fill, all these make a difference for selecting things very accurately and understanding your selections. So I would encourage you to play around with those settings. Now that I have those colors set and we're on contained selection mode and I just wanna select just this cabinet right here, it's very easy for me to draw a marquee around that cabinet, no problem. If I just want to select, say, this outlet right here, it's easy for me to select just that outlet by containing that selection. Now, let's complicate things further. Actually, let's decomplicate, let's simplify, right? Decomplicate's not really a word. Let's simplify this even further. We have tool restrictive selection modes, meaning that if I select my full height cabinet tool, and that's the active tool, and it's acting like it's gonna place a full height cabinet, if I hold shift and draw a marquee, what's it do? Well, it's only going to select based on that tool. So 
So it's a tool restrictive selection mode. Same thing, I wanna click on a door and I'm just going to shift select. Notice that selects just that door. Very simply, I'm selecting only what I want and that's it. Now, what if we add to that selection by hitting control or if I hold shift and add some additional things to the marquee? Well, notice when I hold shift and try to add some things to the marquee, it's not gonna work because it's still set on the door tool. So it's still a tool restrictive selection mode. If I hold control and draw marquee, still the same thing here, right? If I hold control and draw a bigger marquee, well, what did it do? It deselected the door in this case. That was a tool restrictive deselection based on the control key, okay? So that means if I have a outlet and I'm doing a tool restrictive selection mode and I hold control and I deselect just this one outlet by holding control, drawing a marquee over it. So very quickly, we can select only what we want to select. Now this is separate from a couple of other methods of selection. One, we can create a schedule that has a listing of items and that schedule will show things differently based on a couple of different options. One is that we can group similar objects. Let's go ahead and open this schedule up. Let's zoom in right here, group similar objects. With this unchecked, it's going to create a separate line item for every object in your schedule. That's important to note. Same thing, if we go up here, include objects from all floors, we can in fact do that. We can deselect this. We can create schedules for different floors in this method. That's another thing. And then in columns to include, the more we limit the columns to include, the more we have the potential of grouping by like attributes. So that if we only limit this down to say type or floor or one specific thing, if we only limited it to floor, it's only gonna show all objects from one floor, right? So. Um, this is a great way of creating a tool that you can use later, okay? Notice we can't save this into the library right now, but if we hold shift and then select it and make a CAD block, now we can add this to the library and this becomes a tool that we can use for later on. We only would need to unblock this. So now we have a duplicate schedule. So this tool then can be used for different selections, meaning that if I select a particular row like this utility cabinet, then in my edit toolbar, once I unblock this, of course, then in my edit toolbar, I can say either find this object in plan or I can open that object in plan, open row object, okay? And that makes it so I can edit like things all at once. Very cool. Now, another way we might be able to select is maybe I wanna select this cabinet here and I'm gonna use that match properties tool. So let's use that match properties. And for argument's sake, I'm gonna select all, press okay. And it's going to list any other object that might, has all the same properties. Now notice this is outside of the bounds of the room. So it's not matching this cabinet right here, which is for all other you know, rights is the same exact cabinet. Now watch when we place this cabinet into the room and we try that match properties tool, we're gonna notice once we select all, it is gonna select this other object, okay? Now the next thing we can do from here is if we wanted to apply these properties to another cabinet, we can go and hit apply properties. And then I can draw a marquee over this last cabinet and notice how now it's grouped in that selection where all properties are matched. And it, you can get more specific from here from the match properties dialog. So that's kind of another way of selecting. There are so many different ways we can select, it's hard to even cover it in one video. Let's go over the marquee select similar tool. Notice if I take a base cabinet and shift select over this group, it's only going to select base cabinets. If I use the wall cabinet tool and it looks like I'm gonna place a wall cabinet, shift select over the group, it's gonna select this wall cabinet. Now if I choose a full height cabinet tool and I shift select over this group, what does it do? Yes, it selects all cabinets, but notice it didn't select anything else. This is still a tool restrictive tool. It's not gonna select the couch or the outlets, etc. but it will select all cabinets. What if I really only wanted to select upper cabinets, excuse me, full height cabinets? Well, let me select the full height cabinet first, and then I'm gonna use the select marquee similar tool. Marquee select similar, excuse me. There we go. Now I'm only restrictively selecting something of a similar type. And this goes for some uh, specific electrical symbols as well. Notice I've got some can lights in here. If I leave that can light tool selected and I shift select, it's only selecting can lights. Isn't that funny? And then if I go to a marquee select similar, it's 
then it will select outlets, kind of the inverse to me, but uh, a couple of just different caveats of, of those various tools. So I'm hoping that this video helps the original poster kind of understand how the different selections are made and how we can quickly get to exactly what we need, especially in a very condensed area. So, um, and then ask me questions, comments in this, um, in the video comment section, all this stuff kind of drives content. If you, uh, if you need some additional info about this, we can get that. Um, back to the original OP's mention, it does mention that you would like to have control over what's reported when he exports in Colada. And I would say, I think that's more of a limitation of the Colada file type, or at least our specific implementation of the Colada file type export. I would encourage you to export using the 3DS file type because it will retain a component-based structure versus a material-based structure. When we export in Colada, it's going to group things by material. When we export in 3DS format, it's going to group things by component, which is what the original poster is actually asking for, is they want some way to have some control for exporting. Maybe it's a third-party rendering thing. Who knows? But have some kind of control over those names so that they can distinguish between one thing to the next and search within another software, which is another part of why they want an object's um, overview tool of some sort. So, and just keep in mind another way to overview all objects is by creating a material list. Easy for us to open objects from a material list. It can be a master list listing all components within the project file itself. And then you can rename things and relabel things as well. So that if I export, you're going to notice there's some walls in here within my schedule. And those particular walls I've relabeled uh, to something specific like West. So this is going to show up in my 3DS export, which is what the OP is asking for. So hopefully this gives you a lot of cool tips and tricks and helps you go select things all willy-nilly without having to be all that accurate, accurate in your um, mouse movements. Thanks.